Hey, welcome back to the studio. We got a ton going on around here. We've got not just the AC on full blast, but also some meat cooking. And in the meantime, I'm setting up the re-dissection section of the studio. We're going to be fixing this speed controller, which I showed in a previous video, was a little off kilter here. We're going to need to do some soldering here, but we also need the craptacular microscope to be able to see what we're doing. So we're just going to have the easy task of clearing off enough space for the microscope and the laptop here in the soldering station. Alright, giving up on this approach, I need to go back to the internet to figure out how this actually can be done. Okay, I had a look at the internet. Looks like I am going to have to heat up that entire MOSFET back up to soldering temperature. Luckily I have a heat gun here, which is what we're going to use. But I don't want to melt my entire laptop, so we're going to have to prepare a high temperature heating area. Here's our heating setup. We've got some, not even scrap, I uh, purchased this aluminum and steel sheets for full price, and then I've got some aerospace grade aluminum sidebar. Got the helping hands with this moss that we're trying to replace. Kind of reevaluating my workspace, making sure I have a place to put the hot soldering iron. I think I'll just put it straight on top of this aluminum, I hope. Might be good enough. We did it. Wow. Okay. I did not expect that to work. Of course, it's kind of melted into my pliers now. But. So the entire surroundings of this area are kind of getting into hurt you levels. Getting up to 200 degrees, depending on what I hit. You gotta be careful with some of these paper products, you know, like the cardboard and the uh, IKEA particle board desk work surface. So I went back to the data sheet. I'm still waiting for this to cool down. It looks like they have a spec max solder temperature of 260 degrees Celsius. So as long as we kept the whole chip below that, we should be good. So we're back in the microscope lab to take another look at this. I'm gonna make sure that there isn't solder still on this board. I just want the traces or the pads, and I can't really... Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So here's the tools of the trade. We're just gonna be scraping it off with some files, a screwdriver, and this knife. Just like going to the dentist's office. Yeah, that's doing it. Yeah, there we go. Knife always works. I'm gonna go change the blade. I get a sharp knife now. Now who's the sharpest tool in the shed, huh? There we go. I think I just pulled the trace off the board. <laughs> That's actually bad. I'll have to do a new trace up from that uh, pin hole. Anyway, that <laughs> that ought to separate them. No, you're not usually supposed to do that. I don't think. But you can if you want to. So if you can tell, I'm not having a great time at this, but I didn't think I was going to, and it's... I guess it's going better than I thought. Okay, here we go. I think I've got it so that it's not connecting with... Uh, yeah. No. No, but, you know, just don't worry about it. Did I just solder that whole thing upside down? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, take three. I need to find a replacement for that. And I've soldered. We've soldered everything together <laughs> incorrectly. So, uh, again, it's going very poorly. 
Well, we don't fix things because we know how to fix things. We fix them because they're broken. And, uh... This thing was broken when I started, and it's still broken. As long as like, we can rip this whole thing apart, it might actually still be possible to drive this in reverse. Okay, I'm calling it. This is a failure. We reflect as soon as we stripped off that first, the, uh, the gate pad. And then when I was trying to solder directly to the pin across to that other that other lead I found, I broke off the pin from this MOSFET, so it's fucked proper now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to disable or remove this somehow, and then we'll just plug it in backwards and see if we can at least get reverse. Because this isn't, this is a single direction bike, we don't need reverse circuit, we can just switch to the other set of MOSFETs. I found another YouTuber online who's done his own motor controllers. You do that for an electric motorcycle, and that's running at like 10 times the voltage and amperage that I am. So I figure I can just modify his design down a bit, and that'll be a easy, cool project. But yeah, this sucks. This... So we have that MOSFET completely removed now. Okay, I've got the motor controller plugged back into the bike. Do a quick smoke test. Turn it on. Well, there's no smoke yet. It's blinking like it has no signal, which makes sense because it has no signal. Nothing's on fire. Well, that's a successful test. Let's see if we get that same weird 5 volt offset pattern that we had before. And no, we're at 0 volts. That's great. It's perfect. So I was going to end the video right there. What, because the camera ran out of battery, but we should try to actually make sure that the motor controller will actually put out any power before we call this a success. So I'm going to get this chain back on the rear wheel. We'll try to go in reverse, so we'll try to stay in front of it so it doesn't kill us. Contact. Ah, uh, hang on. Uh, yeah, okay, contact. What is that, zero? We'll just sort of lean her back a little. Oh, what do you know? Other than the chain not being on, it works great. Fantastic, that's like most of the way to a success. So, short story long. There was a broken part, we touched it, and the part's not broken anymore. It's not fixed, but this is why engineering and technology skills are so valuable, because it doesn't have to have a repair instruction manual attached to it. So it's a little too late to be trying to put this back together. I need to add additional heat sinking to the other two MOSFETs so they don't fail in the same way before I try to take this back in to work. But, oh yeah, we also need to reverse these motor wires, because we've got only reverse right now. <laughs> it would be a a really bad idea to make just a reversal circuit on this to flip them around. That's called a suicide plug. So just about nothing went as planned, but we have set ourselves up for part three. Part three, where we're going to modify the cooling of the remaining MOSFETs, and we're going to get this bike back on the road.